All right, guys. So why invest in stock market? All right. So there's a lot of myth and there are a lot of people who will be asking this question to me. Uh, most of the people who are, you know, uh, the population of India is about 120 crores and counting. Not even two crores of people are trading in stock market. It is either because of lack of financial knowledge or either it is because of having a fear about losing their money so we invest in share to build our wealth in the long run while some people view shares as a risky investment many studies have proved that putting your money in the right shares for a long period of time that is five to ten years can provide a inflation beating returns and be a better investment options than real estate and gold now most of your people in india especially people are so skeptical they either want to invest in gold or they either want to invest in real estate all right so why do uh, these people invest in uh, real estate and gold is because people are skeptical because people think investment is nothing but just real estate and gold but beyond that there is something called a stock market and people are scared to invest here because in india especially there is a fear of losing money because of this people are skeptical in investing and most of the people nowadays uh, government is trying new regulations in new uh, types of uh, people are pro uh, government is promoting mutual funds that is how some people are indirectly investing stock market through mutual funds and uh, other sources but i think stock market is a very good platform to earn money but at the end of the day it all depends on how you will actually invest so picking up the right stock with a proper analysis and a proper education yes you can definitely make a very good returns there are very good examples such as rakesh junjunwala vijay kedia radha krishna damani so radha krishna damani is no one else but the dmart owner these all people have made their fortune through stock market itself and how did they do it they invested they held the stocks for the long term and hence the money grew you know everybody have heard about warren buffett so yes, even this guy, he's the eighth richest man in the world. And how is he able to handle this? It's all because of investments, investment, whatever he made was in stock market. He waited. That is how he got the money. So moving on to the next slide, guys. Let's talk about how it all started in India. It started in 1800s. All right. The first stock exchange was established in 1800s before 1854. The people were gathered around a banyan tree and they used to sell the stocks. The brokers were gathered around and they used to, you know, have this uh, kind of uh, trading uh, platform on a banyan street. So then in 1854, what exactly happened? Dalal Street, a place where because of the chaotic situation, uh, people had to mo mobilize their kind of uh, their uh, studio, for, uh, their not uh, the exchange from one platform to other. So because of this, there was always a movable thing and the last street was fixed as a permanent location. In 1857, BSE established as the Native Share Broker Association. That means BSE was established in 1857. That was the first time when uh, BSE was established. What is BSE? Bombay Stock Exchange, guys. If you guys don't know what is BSE, BSE stands for Bombay Stock Exchange. All right. So... So, B, so that was the first time when BSC uh, became the Native Share and Brokers Association. In 1900, 1900s era, 1956, BSC became the first stock exchange to be recognized under the Securities Act contract. So Securities Act contract is a global association where it was recognized as a first stock exchange where people could now publicly list this uh, share uh, company. And that is how uh, it got into the picture. In 1956, BSE was the first stock exchange in whole Asia to become the to recognize under the security contract exchange. In 1993, NSE was recognized as a stock exchange. As soon as BSE formed, after the few years, NSE was formed. NSE stands for National Stock Exchange, guys. If you don't know what is NSE, National Stock Exchange. All right. 
so this was the era from 1800s to 1900s all the formation were done in 2000s now commencement of the new internet trading started at this was a breakthrough for everyone before this before 2000 everybody had to go to the particular exchanges to buy stocks they used to have this fixers who used to buy the stocks for them i hope you guys have all seen this harshad mehta where you know the people used to point out their fingers and from fingers they buy and sell the stock so yeah before that was all before 2000s in uh, before 2000s everybody had to buy stocks physically through banks or through brokers and they had to go to exchange to buy stocks then in 2000 a revolution uh, revolution came from which you know commencement of internet trading started at nse okay in 2000 uh, in 2000 nse introduced derivatives trading okay do not get confused what is derivative trading for now just just uh, think that derivative trading is a kind of a future trading so i'm going to explain you about this for now just do not get confused and uh, do not get over overwhelmed about it i'm going to explain you this but in in a little bit after few slides all right so let's move to the next slide what is stock market all right so all this we were talking now let's understand what exactly is a stock market so the definition goes like this a stock market is a equity market or a share market is the place or organization where a bunch of buyers and sellers of stock also called as shares and other listed financial instruments get traded in historic days it was physical stock buy and sell place but nowadays within new age technology most of the work is done in virtual platforms through physical trading still exists but mostly for big traders like bank and financial firms now what is stock market a stock market is a place where shares get listed and buyers and sellers buys the share and who share are they actually buying they are buying a company share now let's assume what exactly is this company why is this company actually listing its stocks it's a very simple thing let's assume this is a pizza all right so in this pizza let's assume we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and eight it slices all right now i want to oh, i want to sell this two parts for some money let's assume i want to sell this for 100 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to charge 50 rupees each right so the same way a company a corporate which wants money why do they want money to either raise their business all right to expand their business because you know that company re requires a lot of capital to always operate so this is one of the way to raise funds so this is one of the ways to raise fund and if you don't know how this process goes on there's a video of ipo which is already there in our platform you can just go and have a look and understand the whole process how this shares come into the picture all right so we've already uploaded the ipo uh, ipo video which you can have a look and from which you'll understand how a stock is born all right for now just understand that shares are bought and sold where the shares are bought and sold is is that the place we call it as stock market all right so now let's understand kind of stock markets the types of stock market we have all right first we have secondary market and then we have a primary market all right so let's talk about the primary market first there is uh, this is where the company gets registered to issue a certain amount of shares and raise money this is also called as getting listed in stock exchange a company enters a primary market to raise capital if the company is selling shares for the first time it is called an ipo yes so it is called an ipo so as i told you before you can go have a look on the video of ipo now let's understand what primary market primary market is all about the process where a stock is built or a share is built all right where a share is built that process we call it as primary market all right we never get chance to buy or sell anything in primary market guys always remember whatever trading we do as a retail traders all right we are called as retail traders who are retail traders we like individuals are all the retail traders who are uh, trading in secondary market all right banks financial institutions they also trade in secondary market all right so now moving on to this part primary market where the shares is born or built you can say all right where the share is built and in secondary market the share is publicly listed so that people can buy and sell the shares all right any company a process of ipo goes through and from there they buy and sell in everything happens in secondary market all right so just for your reference i'll read out this definition one more time for you guys once a new security have been sold that means a new security has been sold from where the ipo process here all right so once it has been sold from here it directly gets listed in secondary market all right 
so primary market these shares are traded in the secondary market this is to offer a chance for investor to exit an investment and sell the shares secondary market transactions are referred to the trades where one investor buys the shares from another investors at a prevailing market price at whatever price the two parties have agreed upon it is the same thing what i said where buying and selling of stocks happen that happens in secondary market all right now let's understand how do we actually invest in stock market as most of you people have uh, this is a very simple thing first you need to open a trading account there are two types of account one is trading account and one is dmat account all right guys let's not go into the depth because these are very simple accounts trading account and dmat account to be invest in stock market so you have to have a trading account or a dmat account to invest in stock market guys this is very mandatory without this you will not be able to uh, trade in the stock markets all right so this trading and dmat account will be linked to your savings account so it can be either linked to your current account as well but for your reference as we are individuals we'll talk about only savings account all right so it will be linked to your savings account to facilitate smooth transfer of monies and shares all right so what exactly happens you connect your link your all right you link your bank account to your dmat account so every time whatever you trade it comes back to your account and if there is a loss so what you need to do you fund your dmat account from your bank account and once it is funded whatever you traded you withdraw the money it will directly come back to your account so it's a very simple account dmat account what we call as there are n number of brokers one of the uh, top is brokers uh, like zeroda and upstocks and uh, ICICI securities so the HDFC securities there are n number of brokers but these are one of the top four brokers i would prefer if you guys are opening your account you guys can go ahead and open their uh, accounts all right so now let's understand what financial instruments are traded in stock market let's uh, I, let's know what all the financial instruments are traded in stock market all right so we have this is stock market so we have shares shares are nothing but uh, you know a share of a company which you are buying all right then we have bonds then we have mutual funds then we have derivatives all right now let me explain you each one by one all right companies need money to undertake projects they want to pay back using the money earned through the project one way the raising fund is through bonds when company borrows the money from the bank ex bank in exchange for regular interest payment it is called as loan similarly when a company borrows from multiple investor in an exchange for timely pay payment of interest it is called bonds all right so did you guys understand what are bonds company need money to undertake projects that means uh, if any company has some project it needs money to take they then they pay back using the money earned through project all right so how do, how do they pay back the money they'll have a short term loan they say boss give me this much money i'm going to use that money for my business and then one way for raising funds are through bonds so what they'll be basically doing is company will sell the bonds because they need money for short term period they don't need money for a long term period so they they know that they're going to return the money the best way to raise the funds was through bonds okay when a company borrows money from bank in exchange of regular interest payment it is called a loan similarly when a company borrows multiple investors in exchange change for timely payments of interest it is called as bond so now if we're taking a short term we call it as loan right the same way if we are taking money from an interest uh, investment investment investors so what we're going to do is we're going to sell a bonds the company will sell the bonds so these kind of bonds are also listed in stock market all right so these uh, bonds fluctuate depending on how much bonds have been sold and how much they're getting back the money all right so these invest these are investment vehicles that allows you so now these are bonds all right so these are the investment vehicles that allows you indirectly investing share market market or bonds it pools the money from collection so this is nothing but mutual funds guys all right so let me just explain you again what are mutual funds so these are the investment vehicles that allows you directly indirectly invest in stock market now most of the people more than 50% of us population is stock market and most of them have zero knowledge about it but you know the reason why these people are investing in stock market is indirect way that everybody is investing through mutual funds now most of you people have seen a lot of ads coming on the tv saying that mutual funds sahi hai mutual funds sahi hai but do you really know what exactly is mutual fund now let me give a very simple example what you can say is there are n number of people who wants to invest in stock market but they have zero knowledge so what they're going to do is they're going to pool money in one place all right so that money is in handled by a fund manager he is an expert 
all right he has studied everything he knows our ins and outs of the market so these people's money is managed here it is a pool of money which will be in, in invested in bonds shares derivatives commodities everywhere here in the stock market and a part of returns again whatever the returns they get it is distributed among these people all right so this is how mutual fund work how does a mutual fund work a mutual fund works is simple they pool the money from n number of people they invest in stock market and in return they give back the money all right so these are the instruments that help you to trade in futures now these are derivatives guys derivatives are a little bit confusing so i'm not going to tell you in depth for now because i'm going to have a different lecture on completely on derivatives part all right so these are the instruments that help you to trade at a future price that you fix today simply put you enter into a agreement you either buy or sell the shares all right so derivatives is nothing but we are buying the future contracts so what is this future contracts so futures were introduced to beat the inflation prices or to to uh, you know to manage the price fluctuations all right so for now just understand futures are nothing but it has shares all right shares how we buy shares right we can buy even one share we can buy two share also but in futures you cannot just buy one or two shares futures is always bought in bulk all right so every future contract will have a lot size all right so if you would see a ipo video where you'll understand where sebi had made a, a simple thing that any ipo should be minimum investment amount should be how much 10000 the same way because 10000 means that uh, let's assume 100 rupees ka each share that means you have to buy 100 quantity minimum so that values to 10000 right so the same way futures also uh, it will have a lot size so let's assume any uh, any stock price which has like 50 rupees and the lot size will be 1000 that means minimum they have to buy 1000 shares that means they have to buy 1000 shares minimum so that is how future contracts are decided so i am going to give you a complete lecture don't worry about this i'll be coming up with that, that uh, derivatives part completely in a depth all right so completely and the final conclusion is stock market gambling for the stock market most of the uh, most important trick is financial management and risk management stock market is not gambling gambling is a zero sum game all right so in gambling what do you do you either you put your all money without any expectation either it will come and either it will go so it's a zero sum game right you're not expecting anything because you're gambling with the money but in stock market it is not gambling it is a different here you need the most important trick is financial management right without an without a knowledge you will not be able to achieve anything now let's assume i'm going to give you a very simple example now let's assume you have a mercedes all right you have a very beautiful car which we call it as mercedes mind you i have a very horrible drawing guys all right uh, so we have a very beautiful called uh, car called mercedes now we need to reach an xyz de de uh, destination and it's a brand new car guys all right this is a brand new car and it will reach the destination if we have full tank fuel also all right now the main thing is the driver all right i don't know to drive okay now i'm going to sit in this car i'm going to take my whole family how sure are you that i'm going to reach this destination there are likely a chances of 10% and the 90% i'm very sure i'm going to hit some bumps or anywhere because i haven't drive i haven't driven the car i don't know how to drive a car that is the first time i'm sitting on a steering wheel on a driver seat and i'm driving i'm risking myself as well as my uh, a uh, family's life right uh, i don't know whether i'm going to reach her if i'm reaching her that means i was the most the luckiest person because 10% probabilities where i reached this because this one not even 10% guys 5% probabilities maybe not even 5% guys maybe 1% also it is more i guess all right let's not go into the math on that one so let me get, tell you a simple example i'm not going to reach my destination because it's not at all possible because i lack in driving i have zero experience about the driving the same way in finance market you just cannot blindly put your money so blindly putting your money is what first thing is listening to someone else telling you a tip buy ye kharid lo jo upar jayega have you even researched about it before you put your money it is a very simple thing you just cannot throw your money in the garbage so that's what you are exactly doing here you are just blindly believing in someone's tips telling that bhai aaj ye kharid lo wo kharid lo it is all because someone else is telling no dude that's uh, that's your money you need to understand how things work right 
so stock market is not gambling unless and until you have a financial education and stock market is not uh, something where, where you can become overnight successful okay there's a lot of uh, rumors through my friends i've heard that you know hey have you heard about mrs bactors it had given a huge returns did you hear about happiest minds ipos they have given huge return i understand those things but you know ipos are very hard to get but investing in stock market and having patience to wait and get that money you know it requires a lot of efforts so guys make sure you have informed knowledge we we will always be there to help you and you have any queries just mail us to info at the rate market minds and we'll be more than happy to help you guys and yes we will be coming upcoming with the next part where i'm going to explain you the different parts this was just a part one of the basics of stock market and very soon i'm going to, I'm going to be coming with the different uh, methods uh, as well as technical analysis fundamental analysis the types of stock markets and there are more things to cover which cannot become covered in one lecture but i shall be coming very soon thank you guys thank you for watching the video and also do if you like if you have liked the video share it with your friends and family